It still feels like you're reversing the question and asking backwards again. Mm -hmm. You're not uh, asking me what, like, what I think is right and wrong. You're asking me how I would decide what is right and wrong before I have even um, told you what right, it is. Because this is like a different scenario with okay. streaming. Is the goal of the conversation to figure out whether I think why I think he's abusive, or is it also to figure out if you think he's abusive? I have both. Yes. Like, it yeah. feels like you are running a ton of interference for him. And the only way I can stop you from doing it is to catch that that happened, which is exhausting. And what then, about Lav? Didn't she say four months ago this thing? And then when she said that, you retweeted I want to know her. would it be consistent? And the consistency is important. So if you had an analogous relationship with your girlfriend and, it, and you said, oh no, mine isn't abuse, but his is, either yours is abuse or you're wrong about his being abused you know same so, thing like if they're lying about what the type of relationship is and you're saying hey i can post all of our texts i can post all of our logs then you didn't say he didn't say i'm well. gonna post our logs he said i'm gonna post her nudes i understand Star, I think what a lot of chat missed was that you felt like letting up immediately made you look dishonest, and that's what clearly frustrated you the most from what I can tell. Yeah. Okay, I assume she's saying that she's going back on her, she's going, she's unrecanting her claims that I flashed her or tried to make her uncomfortable or something. Like, yes, I understand if somebody's like, I'm going to blow up a church, but I, would, I wouldn't blow up a church if you threatened to release my nudes, then yes, for sure, it's ethical to blackmail that person. What is the value judgment if there's no consistency there? Like, what is it if it's not compared to other things? How do we know the value of the judgment then? So, like, if it, do you think that Destiny abused Anna? So, yeah, I don't know. We didn't really talk about what we were going to talk about. Um, so. No. I, I reading the article. I didn't. Uh, I didn't get through the whole thing, but I'm aware of most of the things that I, I read through. Like uh, one of my mods read the entire thing and um, put chapters in everything. And I, yeah, through my research for the documentary, I I feel like I know about all of this stuff. Um, sure yeah there's probably some uh there's dms and stuff you probably haven't seen but oh okay uh, um uh yeah there's 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 evidence that it was not public before but yeah i if you if you know destiny you probably know about most of these stories yeah i when i when i did not know them when i did my interview for your documentary which i i know now not to speak about i, I kind of was just like yeah he's you know made this space and i didn't really know anything about him when i i mean like i knew i knew him like personally but i shouldn't have done that interview i didn't know what i was talking about but now i do i'm ready now to talk about destiny did you feel uncomfortable at all like back then like did you think that there was um like did I you think that there was anything just... unforth uh i felt like um it was kind of it's okay i feel like when you become part of destiny's world it's pitched to you as he doesn't word things in the best way always but that's kind of fun and kind of funny he triggers people they get mad they misinterpret him and misunderstand him and he kind of has fun with that um that, I feel like that's like the narrative that you're told, and like, and that that happens to me all the time. So, I think I was kind of primed to see like a kindred spirit, and like, oh, I that ha I do that too. I say stuff. People, you, you know, sometimes intentionally, ambiguously, or provocatively, people interpret it in one way or another, and it's like sometimes the message get twist that message gets twisted. People get mad about it, and. Sometimes it's funny. Sometimes it's upsetting. I so I feel like I was primed to think of him as like similar to me. 
yeah, when you described that, I, I felt like you were describing yourself. Um, yeah. So I guess the, the biggest question that I have reading over this, um, I didn't see it. I even like, you know, control F the word and tried to, to find this. Um, when you say the word abuse, what is it that you mean by that? Oh, to see if I defined it? Yeah, n yeah, to see if there was a definition, yeah. Uh, I've just been using a kind of general definition I found by Googling it. Um, in my head, I would say it's uh, when you have power over somebody and you cause them undue or unnecessary harm with that power. Um, yeah, I think that's generally what I see on Google as well. Um, yeah. I think that's a good way to describe it. You could come up with a counter example where that happened and it, that nobody would think was abusive, but I think that's a good ballpark estimation of what it means. I, so... Because obviously it's hard to like draw a line on abuse, but I think with that sort of thing, like I could call somebody, uh, it's literally impossible, yeah, to draw a hard line and say this is when it stops being just like a mean thing and this is when it starts being abuse. So, um, yeah, and con I think context matters too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the. Sorry, one second. I, I accidentally turned off stream remote and now. That was a dumb move. Okay. Because, um, yeah, calling somebody stupid at this point could possibly be abuse, right? Um, but when you're saying abuse, you are using it, like, to say, like, this is serious, right? So I would, from the way I felt like it was, it was almost like you're saying this is something that could cause some sort of, like, long-term damage. Would you disagree with that? I don't want to start narrowing the definition. I'm not using it to, like, get you later, like, ah, ha, ha, you didn't say this. Was... Even if you're not the one who gets me later, I still, I don't, I just don't want to narrow it. Um, I think the definition we gave is fine. I want to stick with it, but I, I don't agree that calling someone stupid by itself. Okay. So if you, if you heard me call Shaylin stupid once mm -hmm. in one video, that's not abuse. If I've never said it before and I've never, and I never said it again, calling mm -hmm. someone stupid once isn't abuse. Habitually calling her stupid starts to get there. If you're calling her stupid, um, when she is in distress or for the purpose of shutting her down or for the purpose of controlling her, then it's definitely abusive. But but each individual time isn't abusive. It's the it's the constellation of behaviors. So I also don't I don't abuse is, is like a there there are things you can do that are abusive just once. If you do it just once it's abuse. And there's things that uh need other factors in place or you need to do them over time to be abuse. So I just think there's, and, and that's just for me, everybody's got their own definition. Like people are always going to disagree about what abuse is. Mm -hmm. So I'm, when I use the word abuse in the um, report, I think the main time I use it is just in the title of how destiny abuses his platform. I don't think I use it again um, myself. I quote other people using it, but I don't, I don't know if I, if I do. Um, you do one other time, I believe, to say that uh, this is when you started to think that there were abusive tendencies from Destiny, I believe. Oh, okay, yeah. And in, in, even in a way, I'm sort of quoting myself, um, I'm quoting my past thought, but I'm, I'm not. Um, clearly, the, the entire document, I am saying this is a picture of abuse, but I, I, I don't really invoke the concept within it I, again. Um, and everybody's going to have their own definition. So I am hoping to appeal to the reader's definition and say, and, and just give them the tools that they need 
to decide for themselves if they think it's abusive. It's not, it's not so much trying to convince you. Um, I don't want to do two things at once, you know? Like, I can imagine another essay I could write that's about how our definitions of abuse are too rigid and our bar is too high. We've become too acclimated to people treating each other horribly and we need to lower our bar for what we think of as abuse to, to encompass a lot more behavior that we're, that's totally normalized to us. I could do that and try to shift your, your bar for abuse. Mm. And then, but I don't, I don't want to do that. I think what I want to do is just give you a clear picture of Destiny's behavior. I want to disclose my view. I want to disclose my purpose in writing the report. But really, I, I am as much as I can trying to stay out of it and just say, like, I, even if you hate me, I, st I want you to feel like you got a pretty clear picture of how Destiny behaves in, in these various situations, which is why there's so much evidence and it's so dry. So, yeah, I... Uh, I want the reader to decide for themselves based on their own current definition of abuse if they think destiny meets it, and I and I obviously do. For me, I so I wrote I did like a video a while ago called Mister Girl Hit Piece where it was about your Doctor K hit piece and yeah, um, and one of the things that I was talking about is I really appreciated the way in your video about Dr. K, like you just kind of laid out the facts and just allowed everybody to like label it the way that they wanted to. If they wanted to label it abusive, if they wanted to label it irresponsible, like that's on them. You're just telling them what happened. That's true. But the title is reckless. I mean, I'm still, I still clearly am trying to make the case that he, you know, violated ethics guidelines, obviously. Sure. But well, yes, and so I, that's kind of what I got into in the video is that you had already done like a ton of streams, a ton of other debates where you had already labeled it for us. You had already like convinced us this is what was coming in this video. This is what you were going to prove or this is what you were going to give us evidence of. And so um, I felt like that was the same here where like abuse is a much stronger word than just saying like destiny has a pattern of doing something wrong. Right. And so we're saying, like, this is a much worse thing than just he does wrong things sometimes. No, yeah, this is a pattern of abuse. Yeah. Abuse needs to be stopped. Like, mm -hmm. by definition. And so is that what, like, using the word is supposed to communicate? That it's, like, more serious or that it's just... I think so. That it's, it's, like, that it's like, it's unacceptable behavior. That's okay. a good thing to add to the definition, really. It's a value judgment. It's an unacceptable harm caused by someone in power. Like, you can't, you can't, the sentence of just like, oh yeah, I have an abusive relationship with my girlfriend. I'm really abusive to her. I abuse my child. That doesn't make any sense. You can't say that sentence. Because it, it's, it's an oxymoron. If you say it's ongoing and it's abuse, then the, like, you can't accept, you can't say it in that tone or that way. It's unacceptable if it's abuse. So I think that's another thing that I'm trying to um, get in there. And so if the pattern is abuse, like <clears throat> what is the pattern exactly? Like what is, so throughout this article, I'm sure there's supposed to be things that we're seeing. And it's not mm -hmm. just, like I said, destiny did bad things. It's like, you know, there's a pattern of abuse. There's some sort of thing yeah. here that we see over and over that we want to stop. What, mm -hmm. what do you think mm -hmm. that thing is? I don't think it's just one thing. I think there's a few dynamics. Um, well, I, I list them in the beginning. What do you have it in front of you? What did I say? I do. Uh, let's see. Jesus, this thing's long. Okay. Uh, unequal sexual relationships. Retaliation. Sadism. And narrative control. Okay. Um, would each one of these things you, you consider to be abusive? Yes. 
uh, or you consider there to be a pattern of each one of these things? There are there are interweaving patterns of all four. Each one could be abusive on its own, and I think sometimes does rise to the level of abuse on its own, but particularly when they're combined, when all four are firing, when it's, in a, he's in an unequal sexual relationship with somebody, he's retaliating against that person because they said something about him he doesn't like or did something he doesn't like. He is sadistically enjoying that retaliation and encouraging others to sadistically enjoy it as well. And he has narrative control, meaning he is lying about the person, he's smearing the person, or he's um, enlisted orbiters and other people to help shore up um, the narrative by saying certain things or not talking to certain people. Once all four of those things are going at the same time, I would say it's highly abusive, yeah. Okay. Um, so is there a scenario where somebody, um, I guess, actually, let me ask this. Do you think there's a, a problem with like unequal, uh, power dynamics within a relationship or where do you think that those, uh, where do you think problems would come in if not? A sexual relationship? Mm-hmm. Um, I think it is unethical to have sex with somebody I, I think actually partly it matters how you got there um, if I start uh, if let's say when I first started streaming or started YouTube, I started dating another tiny content creator and then I got huge. We're still having sex. I'm still in a position of power. Um, I sell more money. All those Im imbalances happen, but that I don't think anybody would think that's abusive or unethical. I think it's when you're using your position of power to obtain sex, then it becomes unethical. So it's not really just the end point of the relationship that you're taking into account. Um, so so I, don't, I don't like your question is what I'm trying to say, because you're going at it backwards. I think the question is, what is ethical for people in power to do and what is not ethical? Who is destiny allowed to have sex with ethically? Okay, good. Um, so then what is it who he can have sex with? Cause I was going to ask, like, I would assume that you would have like steps that you would expect him to take in order to ensure that he is having an ethical relationship, but is it more, but then, yeah, if you say who it's with, that would be a little bit different. Is that one of the steps is like figuring out who it is that you're going to have a relationship with, or can you f change the steps that you would necessarily need to take based on who it is? I don't know. This question feels really vague. It feels like you're, uh, I don't know why we don't just talk more specifically about like, it still feels like you're reversing the question and asking backwards again. Mm -hmm. You're not uh, asking me what, like, what I think is right and wrong. You're asking me how I would decide what is right and wrong before I, I've even um, told you what it is. Maybe, yeah. So I like I'm I'm asking like yeah what, because I feel like if I'm talking to somebody who says hey I'm going to date this woman who's 20 years younger than me is this wrong I would probably say it's probably not wrong but there's like a lot of steps that I would expect you to take in order to make sure that this is a uh, an ethical relationship I would expect you to like do X Y and Z. Um, because you are the one who's like in a position of power here and, um, and yeah, I would expect you to do these things to ensure that you're not even accidentally being, um, uh, abusive in some way. Describing your 
mental steps or thought process that you would take if one specific person asked you if they should have sex with somebody 20 years younger is a different question than the one you're supposedly asking me about what I think is right and wrong with regards to people in positions of power or stream. It just feels like you're leaving so many back doors for yourself to not actually be talking about destiny or anything specific that I don't even know. I don't even know what you're asking me. Yeah. So I'm trying to understand. So, uh, one of the things that like, when I listen to you talk about, uh, streamer dynamics is okay. like, you know, you say that like, yeah, we need to have more discussions about what is ethical between these, uh, in these areas and what would be right or wrong. But okay. you are already making the judgment that that is that like some of these relationships are unethical and abusive. And so I'm trying to understand like um, what parts of that would uh, what parts of these relationships would make it abusive and not just for destiny specifically, but it like streamers in like uh, uh, relationships that would have unequal power dynamics. But we can like we can specify it if you'd like. Yeah, I'd like to get more specific because I I think um, I mean you started out saying like I don't think we can draw a specific line mm -hmm. with what abuse is, but now it feels like you're trying to get me to do that. And I there's some things I can say I think you shouldn't do, but like if I say I don't think big streamers uh, above say 500,000 subscribers, I don't think they should have sex with um, streamers who have less than 50 concurrent viewers. You could probably come up with a situation in which I would say, okay, that's fine. I, I, the, with these two people in this situation, I guess I, that's you know an exception. It's, I, I guess this is ethical. I, so I don't, I guess I just don't agree with the way you're trying to approach the conversation. I think, okay, maybe there's confusion. So I'm yeah. trying to ask, like, not, not for you to tell me what is wrong, but like an expectation that you would have within these relationships to ensure that there wouldn't be uh, some sort of wrongdoing. Oh, you don't have them. Don't fuck small streamers. If you're a big, successful streamer, don't fuck, don't fuck people who may be fucking you because of the career benefit you can give them. Hmm. I think that is unethical. I don't think you should use your power for sex. There's a number of things that come to mind when you say that, like, Immediately, I think of like celebrities and the fact that they're just generally like it's possible that there's always going to be somebody who wants to be with him with them because of um, who they are. But then I also think that's of, not like, the same thing. That's not the same thing. So I said well, I didn't say I didn't say I don't have sex with people who want to have sex with you because of who you are because of your status. Don't have sex with people who are in the same industry as you, who, and you have power over them. Well, people want to have sex with other people who have power over others. Like, it's attractive to see that, you, like, yeah, if you're a general in the army and you go bragging about it, people are going to want to fucking suck your dick. But okay. you shouldn't not, you shouldn't let them suck your dick if they are underneath you in your chain of command. Okay. So destiny, uh, like is, um, starts to date somebody who makes cupcakes on YouTube. Um, well, I don't know. Cause they, even that they could, they're still on YouTube, so they could possibly still just gain from that just by being on YouTube. Yeah. Um, probably, probably less. So seems a little safer. Cause. 
So the reason I'm asking this is, is like in my head, the way that I think about this is, yeah, I, I don't think it's automatically abuse just because there's a likelihood of abuse. And that's what I feel like you're saying in the article a lot of times is that there seems Bro, like there's you're a comparing, high potential. Uh, you're, you, you, I don't, uh, I don't like this format of okay. discussion. Where I say some, I think something is abusive. You don't mm -hmm. say, well, you don't say, why do you think it's abusive? What, okay, what do you think is abusive about this situation? Or what do you think is whatever? What do you think would be best? What, what would your guidelines be? You're not really saying that. You're kind of, you're kind of challenging me or kind of picking apart my ideas. But the way you do it is by saying, well, do you, what if he had sex with somebody? Like, okay, we're, some, somebody who is, is an orbiter or who is deeply entrenched in his sphere. Mm -hmm. where he blacklists people. He threatens people. He threatens to, to leak your nudes. He directs people to your Kiwi Farms thread. He talks about you, calls you out incessantly on stream, telling, telling you that you're a psychotic person and that t saying in public that he wants to join your therapy session to debate your therapist because your therapist said he was abusive. You're taking that relationship with Anna and then saying like, well, okay, what if, what if he just had sex with somebody who made cupcakes? And it just, it just feels like, like, what the fuck are you talking about? Well, it's no, just, I, just, I, I immediately took that back because I said that it, that would still fall into the lines of what you're saying. But the, even like, so, it doesn't matter. It's just, it's just, it seems like an insane way to begin. Like, I keep having these conversations with all these people who like don't ask the obvious really straightforward questions of like like so what do you think or like how do you how are you feeling about this or what do you what's what what would you what do, what do you think makes well, if you could draw a line for abuse how would you do that what would your guidelines be for streamers if you could make a constitution of ethic or ethical ethical guidelines for streamers what would it be like you have your ethical guidelines for for therapists so what would the like you're not asking anything like that you're like just asking all these really vague, weird questions that leave you so many outs to not to. It's like you you're not taking a stance. You're not even letting me take a take a have a position. I, I just feels like I don't. Um... Sorry, the last one is kind of what I was trying to ask. Is yeah, I was trying to ask for like a a list of like expectations. So when you say like, hey, this is like a constitution of what I would put out for okay. streamers. That is what so I'm asking you, when I'm saying, like, what are right. expectations that you would have of streamers? Okay, but when you compare Destiny fucking and, and um, all the horrible shit he did to Anna mm -hmm. to being in the same league or potentially in the same league as in having sex with somebody who makes cupcakes on YouTube, I, it feels like you are running a ton of interference for him. And the only way I can stop you from doing it is to catch that that happened, which is exhausting, and then list all of the ways that Destiny's treatment of Anna is different from a big streamer fucking somebody who makes cupcakes, lest I start running interference for him too by just being lazy. And it just makes these conversations like so completely exhausting. And I, and I, I have noticed in Destiny's sphere that he... And those who watch him do not like to make normative judgments about anything. And the whole article is a, val is a value judgment. They don't like to make value judgments. They don't like to say that's abusive. They like to ask a hypothetical. If you ask Destiny or one of his followers, is, is X abusive? He'll say, he'll, he'll say it could be, could be. It's, it's, it's possible. But these things are really complicated. So what you have to think about. And then they'll start comparing it to other stuff. And then, and then, and like, yeah, you can have a conversation that way. You can, you can say stuff and then the other person says stuff back and forth. And then eventually an hour will have elapsed and I guess you had a conversation, but no one will have ever actually taken a position and just a million comparisons will be made. And then it'll you know, be like, well, this was really interesting. So like, if it, do you think that Destiny abused Anna? Yes. Okay. I think that some of the things that he was doing was were abusive, yes. Okay. Is your opinion on the report or Destiny's behavior part of this conversation? 
are you are you like going to be are we both taking positions on this or is it just me and you're interviewing me uh so originally i'm trying to understand what it is that you consider abusive is so that i can understand where it is that like uh so that I can immediately, yes, think of like situations that I would consider abusive. So almost exactly by, what you considered or my, what you my, just mentioned. Yeah, go ahead. By, by abusive by my standards or by your standards? Uh, so I, uh, yes, abusive. Like once you tell me what, what it is that you think is abusive, I want to understand that. And then I want to think of like similar scenarios in my head, like you said, of like, you know, this is what his orbiters do. They'll make comparisons to this. And what about this? That's the way I'm thinking about it. And I'm trying okay. to think, because this is like a different scenario with okay. streaming. Is the goal of the conversation to figure out whether I think, why I think he's abusive, or is it also to figure out if you think he's abusive? Uh, both. Yes. I think okay. if I could understand your thought process better on why you think he's abusive, I think I could better uh, assess whether or not I agree with you. Okay. I think a lot of my assessment of whether something is abusive is my emotional reaction to it. Okay. If you've never had a Kiwi Farms thread made about you, and if you don't know what Kiwi Farms is, and if you grew up with your address being in the phone book, then the concept of doxing, even if you knew it had a word and people really don't like it, might just be meaningless to you. If you're like a 50, 60 year old guy who's Everybody knows where I live, and I leave my door unlocked, and I don't say things that I wouldn't attach my name to, and I don't say things I'm not proud of, and I'm proud of who I am, and I don't understand that I don't understand what what any of these people are talking. What are they just like cowards? I don't get it. You could tell them Destiny directed his audience to go post, make accounts on Kiwi Farms, and post an Anna's Kiwi Farms thread two days after sexting her. When she asked him, confronted him about it, part of his response was. You called me sexually abusive, so I think I have a right to do this, or have a right to talk about this. If you speak the language of the internet, and if you've had experiences with any of these things, that's going to strike you completely differently, even if you have all the same facts. But you, you're just not going to have the same emotional response to it. You're going to be like, I do. So if you, uh, to me... It's clearly abuse. And, and like Anna's reaction to it in the DMs, she responds to him and she's in all caps, you ruined my fucking life, you fucking sociopath. What is, what is wrong with you? Mm -hmm. um, so I think that the way you're approaching this might be overly intellectual. And I know that's on purpose. I know you're trying to figure out, let's, let's intellectualize this and make it, like, make sense. And I think mm -hmm. for a law in a, or a rule, that makes sense. But some laws do involve, like, unwanted or causing fear or causing distress is part of the criteria for having broken the law. And... By the same token, in assessing abuse, a lot of it is just how I feel hearing about what happened. And then describing why it's abusive comes afterward. So now I've thought about it enough to think about why it's abusive to direct people to someone's docs two days after sexing them. And then to, and then to claim that there was never any over... I'd never called her a stalker, but the, like... All of that just seems really abusive to me, but and I thought about it enough that I can articulate why, but it, it doesn't translate to being able to then articulate how I would judge whether anything else was abusive at any time. So I'm, I don't think I'm going to be able to reverse engineer it for you okay. in the way that you're asking. Because, um, yeah, I, like, I also defended you when it came to, like, people... Who were calling you abusive and i overly they accused me of overly intellectualizing it there was a whole video where they added like scary music and all this stupid stuff to make stuff you know seem a lot worse and yeah um, 
and I, yeah, like, same is like, like, I, I guess my initial, like, emotional response to that, it was like, yeah, this feels weird, this feels icky, but then, yeah, I started, like, thinking about, like, you know, intimate relationships that I've had with people, the way that we talk to each other, the way that we interact, and I, like, like you explained, like, I end up starting to, like, compare it to a bunch of other things that yeah. I either know to be abusive or know not to be abusive. And that helps me because this is a weird space. This is like, you know, the internet, the way that we interact with one another. This is a new dimension that I am I feel like I'm trying to uh, to actually like comprehend what act, what even could be abusive here. Okay, I, I think a component of defining abuse is how it makes you feel to witness or hear about it like I just said, and I think that making comparisons can help you explain why something is abusive to somebody else. But I don't think it's going to help you much with determining for yourself whether something is abusive. If you're having a dinner with like another couple and you see one of the people ab actively abusing the other in your in your mind or treating them in a way that you that strikes you as like unacceptable like he's just start, he's like hitting her repeatedly like in the face like you're gonna feel like oh i have to do something to stop this like i can't sit here mm -hmm. i can't just sit here and watch this i have to stop it i think then later when somebody says oh why did you have to why why did you have to stop it it's not like he was you know like break her nose or anything it was just some hitting why why you could you you could answer that question even though it's like kind of in that situation it's weird because it's like you assume everybody kind of is on the same page about it at this you know in this decade in this country but i think that it gives too much cover to destiny to try to reverse engineer this and I, I and that that's like going back to how I structured it. I want you to read it and I want you to either know it's abusive or not. And I'm not going to be able to convince you one way or another. Cuz it's about how you feel. How does it feel to read uh, to to read the words that he's saying to these people and see the things he's doing? I think that's what it's like uh That's the that's the um appeal to like your own sense of what is abusive i mean like i said we can't draw like hard lines here but i almost feel like when you say i can't reverse engineer this because that would give him cover yeah. and but it almost sounds like you're saying like i i can't be consistent on this line i can't compare it to other things because if we did that then it wouldn't sound like abuse anymore but wouldn't that just mean that it's not abusive then? If it doesn't sound like abuse, is it? Not yeah, abusive? like if we compare it to other things that are similar and we say like, hey, like this is analogous in this way, or we uh, or we intellectualize it and say like, hey, we'll be consistent on the way that we're judging this. Would we, if we're saying, oh, well, then it's not going to sound abusive anymore. Wouldn't that I... just mean that it's not abusive anymore? No, I think comparison is a good way to make. Th no, I think I think it's a cult and endless comparison in lieu of making value judgments is a way that people remain in the cult. That's one way to stay a Destiny fan is to not make value judgments about things, not to not say things are right or wrong, to say, well, what about this other thing? What about when he did this? What about she did? It? Didn't she deserve it? Mm -hmm. Doesn't everybody do that? Those, those, those shut down value judgments. I, I want the value judgment to just stand on its own. He's abusive. It doesn't matter who else is abusive, who isn't abusive. It doesn't matter. I, don't, I, don't, I just like, don't want to talk about it, I guess. I'm just, I'm confused. Like, what is the value judgment if there's no consistency there? Like, what is it if it's not compared to other things? How do we know the value of the judgment then? Like, I feel like you're saying, hey, if the, we just if need we, the value judgment, no, but it doesn't have any value. No, all, all value judgments are anchored in a sense of right and wrong. Mm -hmm. 
if you anchor them all to each other, which is what happens in Destiny's cult, then everybody feels if this is I've, I'm, I, this is so key to understanding the cult. Everybody feels like they have a rigid system of right and wrong in, in Destiny's cult. But it's a rigid system of comparison. So it's an interlocking network of knowing relative, well, where does my take on um, the Kenosha shooting square with my take on defending yourself in private property? How does that connect to my take on like abortion or gun rights? How does that connect to my take on like racism or policing or race relations? And they can all be really, really um, in this like crystalline interlocking structure. But then when you try to find, okay, but where, where's the morality that this is anchored to? Every point is just connected to another take. And it turns out that the entire structure is adrift. And that as long as the, as long as the debate bro take, as long as, long as the, lo the logic interlocking um, each piece is sound, and, and often it is, uh, often it isn't, but often it is, or can appear, to, can appear to be sound or feel sound. I mean, in some ways it almost helps Destiny when it's not sound, because then this audience can say, wait, explain this to me again, because I don't, I don't see how they connect. And then he explains and they go, oh yeah, okay, okay, okay. And so then it, it beca it's, it's more than, goes beyond just um, his, knowing his logic. It's not actually logical, so you are just knowing his framing of it or his words that explain the logic, but the structure is adrift, even though everyone on it feels like it's solid and unmoving and they hate, they hate inconsistency. Most mm -hmm. of the ways that, that you'll see them argue against me or against any, any critic is going to be, oh, wait, but, oh, but didn't, what about Lav? Didn't she say four months ago this thing? And then when she said that you retweeted it or you liked it on Twitter, or you agreed with it. So that shows that you're the most disgusting thing on earth, which is uh, a hypocritical. You're lost. You don't have this crystalline structure. You don't. You don't. You don't. You don't have the same. And what you're doing now is like it's almost. I know. I know you're not doing it um, maliciously, but it's like a hypocrisy test. Hypocrisy is. I. I just don't think we should be testing for for hypocrisy right now. Or I don't. I don't want to be tested for it. I. Um, cause, cause, because the assumption of a hypocrisy test is that I am not a hypocrite. And then if you can show that I am a hypocrite, the assumption that I'm not a hypocrite therefore undermines my abuse claims. But maybe I just am a hypocrite. Maybe I am abusive to my girlfriend. But, my, but maybe I'm also right that Destiny is abusive. So me, showing that I'm abusive or that my my evaluation of abuse is inconsistent, doesn't actually exonerate him. It only exonerates him if you value the interlocking crystalline structure of the take, let's call it the, the, the take ship. It's a, spe it's a spaceship made of takes, made of, made of arguments and logic bro comparisons. And, but it's, it's a drift because it is not anchored by morality. Whereas I am more likely to have all of my stances are going to be anchored in a sense of morality and that sense of morality may be inconsistent and so then you're gonna you're gonna find cracks in my structure you're gonna say well you had this take here and you had this take here but they're they don't connect because there is there is no unifying code of morality and logic that all totally makes sense eventually one is going to have to be flexible and i would fucking much rather my my takes and my logic bend to my morality than the other way around okay. so to just yeah. my, i guess my my problem with the way you're interrogating this is that i'm making a moral and emotional claim that comparing it to other stuff doesn't really get at what I'm saying and instead unanchors us and takes us back onto this un unanchored system of thinking 
that allows you to never have to morally condemn anything as long as you can just keep debating and comparing. I so I think that you're right as far as like yes, like he can be wrong and okay. that and you can do something else and say, Well, I didn't do anything wrong there and mm -hmm. be hypocritical while he's still wrong. I completely agree. And I don't actually like care whether or not you yourself are hypocritical. But generally, and I don't know how much of like getting into a meta ethics debate will actually be um, useful here. But when, when I'm talking about consistency, it's not necessarily to say that you are a hypocrite. And I know tons of like chatters and everybody wants to do that. They want the owns. They, they have Mr. Girl derangement syndrome and like that's, that's all they care about. But more so it's like I want to, if I work this into my ethical system, I want to know would it be consistent. And the consistency is important. So if you had an analogous relationship with your girlfriend and it and you said oh no mine isn't abuse but his is either yours is abuse or you're wrong about his being abuse and so no i'm saying if it was analogous but it can't it can't really be it probably not like I can't probably ever can't no have can't context that would make it analogous. You, I think you're correct. If it were identical, right? And it can't be identical. Well, we could we could have similar uh, surrounding context that we could consider to be analogous. But yeah, I just uh, I don't know how much getting into a, a like where our ethics come from it, or whether or not we should or shouldn't be consistent is going to be useful. Um, so I think instead, like, I think for a lot of people who are in DGG and they, they lived through the whole Anna saga, um, I think for a lot of them, the context meant like of what Destiny was doing in and of itself in a nutshell, in a vacuum, like he was doing some really messed up stuff. But I think that I don't they... hear them saying that. I hear them saying it's sorry. Go ahead. Well, I think that the surrounding context made it seem justified that they felt like he was also being abused, and that she was chasing him around, saying, "Hey, the relationship's over. I'm not going to talk to you anymore." But then the next day, going on stream and talking about him again, sending all of his friends messages and talking to all of them, while also like coming back and saying, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done okay. that. I do you know do that Star anymore. right now Stardust is doing a stream? Have you, do you know she's doing a stream right now? No. About, okay, Stardust is doing a stream right now called Completely Unhinged Stardust Rants About Mr. Girl. Star, I think what a lot of chat missed was that you felt like letting up immediately made you look dishonest, and that's what clearly frustrated you the most from what I could tell. Yeah. Okay. I assume she's saying that she's going back on her... She's going... She's unrecanting her claims that I flashed her or tried to make her uncomfortable or something. That's how... It, I don't know what she's talking about. I assume that's what she meant from that snippet, right? Yeah. And the stream's been going on for... Uh, two hours. Do you, th like, should I? Like, the... <laughs> I don't care. It's fine. She can do that. She has a right to do that. Should I send Dan over to her? next five conversations with people or all to, to talk to tell people that they shouldn't talk to her because she might say these things about me should i threaten to leak damaging information about her or or new not that i don't have news of her but you get what i'm saying mm -hmm. she's going to keep releasing damaging information about me like it's it's fucking insane it's just like it's just accepted that destiny is so fucking thin-skinned 
that it's okay for him to retaliate against people just for criticizing him. Um, so I just, I don't want, I don't want to approach it this way, man. I don't, I just don't agree with the entire approach. I reject the entire line of questioning of like, well, what's the, well, how do we are defining abuse exactly? That's what they do. Well, that's exactly what they do. Sure. And I'm trying to get away from that. That's a, that's actually okay. why I brought this up is to, okay. like you said, you wanted to talk about specifics earlier. So instead of outlining abuse and all of this that's why i'm bringing up i think that people felt like the surrounding context for destiny was that he was also abused that he had somebody stalking him and that the things that he was doing without surrounding context would have been really messed up stuff but in reaction to what was happening so like she says hey he he uh stells me this one time he he you know i i i Wait, thought he was that. gonna wear a condom and well i that. think <clears throat> she said okay. he pressured he pressured me to not use a condom he didn't say she she didn't say he stealthed her okay i don't, I don't I, think i think she originally said that but maybe i'm wrong i could either way it doesn't yeah so he, okay, okay. she's saying i don't like, i'm yeah, sorry so i don't know what she did i can't say for sure what she didn't say because she said a lot of stuff i will say my understanding is that she said that he pressured her to not use a condom and then later um took it back Okay. Um, but yeah, that seemed to happen a lot where she would make claims about things. And then when Destiny would release something, um, I don't know all of it, but I feel like I know a good bit of it, where each time, initially, I would hear Destiny release this thing and I would be like, oh my goodness, I cannot believe he did this. This is going to ruin his career. He is an idiot. This was so dumb. And then I would find out why he released it and pretty quickly feel very differently. And I would see the clips of what she said and the claims that she made and, you know, all these things. And I would, I would normally feel differently once I found out why he felt it was necessary to release it. I don't, I didn't always feel that way, but, um, but fairly regularly. And I did feel like she was, yes, she was just, uh, I, I, I'm also di I diagnosed with OCD and I had conversations with her in the background and connected with her through this because I had similar things with girlfriends where I had problems with this. And, um, and so, yeah, so I, like, I understood where she was coming from and, um, but I also understood what it, what it, I could imagine what it would be like to be on the other side of that as well and uh and feel like somebody is making very serious claims about you that you have to disprove in some way that you don't have to also he didn't it, 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 how does directing people to her qe farms thread defend him against her claims it's just straight up retaliating he's just doxing her in retaliation because she called him abusive I feel like saying because she called him abusive is a bit uh, reductive in this scenario. Like, she made very specific claims about him doing things that... Um, she said that he was sexually abusive because he threatened to leak her nudes. And then he mentioned that as part of his justification for doxing her. What, what was the justification? That she had called him sexually abusive. He was leaking DMs, right? He said that he was going to leak all the DMs, uh, if I remember She correctly. said, if Anna leaks my sex... He said, if Anna leaks my sex... Okay, I'll give you the exact quote. Okay. Tell Anna if she leaks my sexting, I might have some pics to share. Yeah, that was so earlier when you asked me if I do. You, do you think if that I thought a... that he had done anything abusive? This is this is exactly the one that I was thinking of. Yes. Okay. Um. Then, after he told people, okay, I'll just read the quote. 
Somebody on Kiwi Farms has made a thread of Anna. I'm only doing non-media blackout because I know you fuckers are going to be finding it slowly over the next week or two and then talking about it in chat and getting big bans. So if you're obsessed with Anna and you want to talk about her all the time, you, Chatter, you can actually go to Kiwi Farms and you can go and post all you want, read all you want, make accounts there. People put a lot of effort into categorizing and archiving everything. There you go, okay? Anna DM'd him. What the fuck is wrong with you? You just outed that Kiwi Farms thread about me. Dude, you are horrible. Destiny's reply was, I have a media blackout related to your stuff, and I wanted everyone to get it out before people were talking about it incessantly over the next two weeks as more and more people discovered it. Okay. Does he do just that's half of his response. Do you think that half makes any sense? He he's saying that because he has a media blackout that he cannot that he doesn't want people to post it in his community, so he sends them to Kiwi Farms. I have a media blackout related to your stuff, and I wanted everyone to get it out, meaning out of their systems, mm -hmm. I think. Before people were talking about it incessantly over the next two weeks as more and more people discovered it. Yeah, no. That doesn't make sense. Okay, and then here's the second half of the same DM. You are constantly talking about me on your stream, so I think it's fair for me to bring it up. You went as far as to say I was sexually abusive the last time you mentioned me. Do you agree with my interpretation that he is explaining that he basically doxed her in retaliation for him, her calling him sexually abusive? Or part, partly? That was part of his motivation? Uh, sending people over to her kiwi farms if there's a dox there yeah that, yes that he is sending people to her docs yeah yes okay she said because you threatened to leak my nudes you fucking sociopath you literally ruined my fucking life you just doxed me on your stream fuck you you put me in danger he replied you're doing it to yourself and you're going to keep doing it to yourself I feel very emotional reading this mm -hmm. because I know it's abusive or that's how I know it's abusive. It's hard to, it's hard to exp like I could explain it like, yeah, we can, we can reverse engineer it. We can explain why it's abusive, but it's hard to think of a, an exact rule that this breaks. There's so much plausible deniability. There's, there's going to be fans of his that are like, what do you, t there already are. When Chud Logic, I, I tuned into Chud Logic stream when he got to this part because I wanted to see what he'd say. And he said, oh, I think, I think Mr. Girl has just a really negative impression of this. I don't think, I don't think that it was anything malicious. He's fucking acknowledging that it's malicious, except he doesn't say it was malicious. So there, I just think with somebody who operates with so much coded language and underhandedness it's not it's not going to make sense to be like streamers shouldn't tell their audiences about websites that have the addresses of people that they have sex with or had sex with but are now they're stalkers but they're still sexting them it's just it's so convoluted that i i would rather just tell you the whole story and then and then you can you know you'll know if it's abusive you'll know if you think it's abusive well, but like, uh, like, like the just, there's no, like, what is your, what possible justification could he have for this interaction with her? Um, so when you say there's no reason for him to retaliate, like it doesn't matter at all. You uh, say, no, I didn't, I didn't say that. I said, it's not a defense. You said, can't destiny defend himself if people are saying bad things about him? Is mm -hmm. this, is, do you think that this is, is he even defending himself? It, well, it depends on what. Like, what exactly is on that Kiwi Farms thing? You're saying that there's a docs. I, I don't know what else yeah. is all there, but... There's a docs. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I like, when I look at people <clears throat> like Demon Mama growing over time, Bosch growing over time, Hassan growing over time, I, like, I watched these people just, like, disappear from his community because they felt like he did something wrong, and they all, you know siphoned off into other communities um and so when like you say like oh well why does he have to i felt like you said why does he have to defend himself against uh 
uh, claims of like sexual abuse. I think I and, said you don't. I think I. Uh. I don't think I said that. Okay. I think Maybe I said I don't, I don't think he has to defend himself against people criticizing him. This time she did say he was sexually abusive, but he did threaten to leak her nudes. And that is abusive. Mm -hmm. And you could call it sexually abusive. I'm fine with that label. The way to defend yourself, you could be like, yeah, I, I threatened to... <laughs> yes. He's going to get out there and say, well, it is true, I did, I did threaten to leak Anna's nudes because I felt that she was harming my reputation, um, which is a crime, by the way. Uh, I want everybody to know that the crime, it's technically not sexual abuse. It's just extortion. That, yes, sure. If he wants to fucking defend himself that way, that's fine. But how is, how is doxing her defending himself and encouraging people to work on her Kiwi Farms thread? Yeah, sure. I w it's probably a type of blackmail to say, like, hey, I will leak yeah. these if you don't do X. Yes, it's blackmail. Sure. Um, so, yeah. So, okay. So, so. Maybe I'm wrong then. So you, so you blackmailing think it, women like, that you have sex with is pr a pretty far cry from having sex with the cupcakes girl. I just don't think these comparisons are going to get us anywhere. I or they're not going to get me where I I I, I, I'm I don't think I've made I, a comparison in a while. I, I I've tried to stop doing that. Okay. Um, but yeah, I okay. So maybe I misunderstood because that's what I was getting at with those questions. So I thought you were saying he shouldn't defend himself. Why would he? I thought you said why would he defend himself? And I'm thinking, well, you think it's a cult, so, like, if uh, if people are actually leaving because he's doing something wrong, no, no, and he I get defends why. himself... I'm sorry, I get his justification. Okay. I'm saying, I, you said you would hear about things that, she, that he did to her, then you'd hear the context, and you would say, oh, well, that's not that bad. I'm asking you, is this one of those cases? Is there a context that possibly can excuse this behavior? I don't remember because I, I do remember going over this and feeling like there was something that excused it. it like, so it would depend on what the context is. If there's something there that says like, hey, I'm going to post all of these DMs because you're making a claim that I am saying things in these DMs and we have a type of relationship in these DMs that I do not believe we have. I can just post the DMs as is. I'm not going to edit them, not going to change them. So nobody accuses me of cutting stuff out and I will just post them and then everybody will see. But he didn't say that. He said, tell Anna if she leaks my sexting, I might have some pics to share. Sure. I, you're So you said... Like you're asking me if this is wrong, and I'm saying there is context that could exist, but I don't, I don't know exactly. What? So I, what con? I, it's fucking illegal for a reason. The law wouldn't allow it. Like, do you think the law is wrong? Do you think blackmail should be legal in certain situations? Um. Well, again, if somebody's saying, so that's what I was explaining is if somebody's saying, "Hey, you sexually abused me in this way." And you did th this sort of sexual abuse. That's not what and happened. This is say, a compar This is a comparison. You're making up a hypothetical that doesn't address what I just said. Uh, you you asked me if there could be a good okay blackmailing to with do nudes, this. not blackmailing with nudes. Is there an a situation? Is there a context that makes blackmailing with nudes ethical? Like, yes, I understand if somebody's like, I'm gonna blow up a church. But I would I wouldn't blow up a church if you threatened to release my nudes. Then yes, for sure, it's ethical to blackmail that person. Barring that, realistically, uh, is there a context where you think that Destiny should be blackmailing Anna with her nudes? I is there a context? Sure, there's probably some type of context, like the you know same thing. Like if they're lying about what the type of relationship is, and you're saying, hey, I can post all of our text i can nudes? post all of our logs the he didn't say he didn't say i'm well. going to post our logs he said i'm going to post her nudes i understand it feels like you don't i maybe i'm misunderstanding the question if is i is there feel a like context yeah is there a context that you think would justify blackmailing somebody by, by threatening to release their nudes well no there's never context where it's okay to blackmail somebody with nudes uh, okay I so what like he that's... did so okay so that was wrong sure with the context that we have right now yes i would say that that is wrong. You, or yes. with any context blackmail is automatically wrong just by like calling it blackmail it, yes that it is 
always going to be wrong to blackmail someone. Okay, so no matter what else we find out, Destiny threatening to release Anna's nudes to prevent her from releasing damaging information about him is wrong. <laughs> so, I feel like you're going to call me Weasley for this, but I'm I'm trying to say that unless those nudes are what it is that is like justifying so if he's if he's releasing information to say this is not the type of relationship we have or these are the nudes that show that like she is still having like a sexual uh um relationship with me and she's denying this or this is i didn't like you know she this is her me like me supposedly begging for these things that's not and... what happened though she said he said tell anna if she releases our sexting if she leaks my sexting mm -hmm. I I I ha might have some pics to share. So you keep making up okay. stuff that he didn't say. He didn't say what In you're this, saying again. No, I hold on. You're asking me. You're asking two different questions. So I'm going to answer you both one real question. quick. Do so you, that it do you agree makes sense. that okay? Yes or no? There is absolutely no context that we could later learn that would make what he did acceptable or non-abusive. It's wrong, no matter what else happened. There is no context that excuses that behavior. True or false? If that is the entire thing, then yes, true. Yes. What do you mean, if that is the entire thing? The question is, if we find out more context, which means it is not the entire thing. Correct. And I've explained a couple of different types of context that I think that I could learn. So where okay. that's what he's saying in that, True, in that okay. message. Is this message wrong no matter what? True or false? No matter what else we learn, this was wrong for Destiny to do. True or false? Tell Anna if she leaks my sexting, I might have some pics to share. That's wrong no matter what. Do you agree or disagree? Yes. If he's talking about her nudes, then yes, I agree. Do you agree that he's talking about her nudes? I don't know. What do you think? I think that there, it could, it, that's what I keep trying to explain is there could well, be you a think lot he's of talking different about types her, of Do you think he's talking about her nudes? Yes. Yes, I do. Okay. Later, when uh, Anna said, you threatened to leak my nudes. Because you threatened to leak my nudes, you fucking sociopath. You literally ruined my fucking life. You just doxed me on your stream. Fuck you. You put me in danger. At the end of that series of DMs, Destiny said, you're doing it to yourself, and you're going to keep doing it to yourself. Do you think that the lack of, a, of saying... What do you mean I threatened to leak your nudes? I don't know what you're talking about. Is further evidence that he was, in fact, threatening to leak her nudes? Yes. I've never heard Destiny ever say he wasn't threatening to leak her nudes anywhere. Right. Okay. What percent confidence do you have that he was threatening to leak her nudes? Like 85% confidence that he was threatening <laughs> to leak her nudes. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's assume for the purpose of this ethical question that he was, in fact, threatening to leak her nudes. Mm -hmm. Do you agree that no matter what the context is, that was wrong? I don't like this this framing of no matter what the context, because, yeah, again, I know because you don't you don't want to make a value judgment. No, I, I'm willing to make a value judgment with the context, but I feel like. But then you say that we don't know the context. So here's my problem. You'll say, I'll make a value judgment, but we have to say that I'm only 85% confident that this event that I'm judging even occurred. And then if, if you're, if you, if at this point, if you're only 85% confident that he was threatening to leak her nudes, then you're leaving quite a lot of wiggle. I can only imagine the different, um, the variables you have working in your brain for all the other contexts that could have happened. So well, then your value, so, that, like so then your value, variable. but then your value judgment becomes so watered down and meaningless that it's Is like, it though, I, it's, it's like I don't know the full context. I'm just saying, yeah, yeah, blackmailing this. I feel like if I'm telling you exactly like the types of things that would change it. And those types of things never come out. Then you no. and I both know that this is wrong, and that I. It's still not a real condemnation. Like it's not. It's not a real condemnation. Everybody else knows it's not, that this is wrong. It's not a condemnation. It's just another intellectualized debate, bro, evasion. Okay, I. 
I believe if you're, you. I, I, I don't think I can talk about this with you because you're not even willing to condemn this clear case of he, he blackmails her with her nudes. Mm -hmm. She calls it sexually abusive. In retaliation, he doxes her. And then she says, you ruined my life. And his, his defense of doing it is that it was retaliatory. And you're, you're still like, well, we don't know for sure that it's abusive. Yeah, because I said earlier, I remember this happening and feeling like there was something that, um, that changed this for me. Because I remember initially, yes, I felt exactly how you're talking about it right now. This is exactly how I talked about it on stream. There is evidence of me being super upset about this and then people sending me other context that I feel like I remember changing things. But I could be wrong. And I, like, and I have no issue condemning destiny like there's nothing to stop me from condemning you are, destiny you are, i think you're having issues with it right now i have the same issue condemning destiny as i do anybody else well you shouldn't because he's more condemnable than most people most people don't act like this To condemn somebody who be who operates like destiny, you have to be willing to call a spade a spade. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I'm saying that I like I I I, I, I we'll, condemn I this behavior. I think that this is wrong, and I think that I can think that destiny does really messed up stuff sometimes, and I I'm willing to to say that this is wrong. I can't even tell you how chillingly terrifying it is to listen to people say things like. I can think bad things about destiny. I can condemn destiny. I criticize mm -hmm. destiny all the time. I can sure. say bad things about destiny. It's terrifying. Well, I have to but, say the same thing about you a lot, actually. I have to, like, when people tell me that I'm just a Mr. Girl simp, that I refuse to admit he does anything wrong or that he's ever wrong, I have to say, like, no, I have, I have record of, like, condemning this guy and disagreeing with him and saying uh having difference of opinion from him it, this is part of the space where it doesn't matter who you are if you agree with somebody sometimes now all of a sudden there's this idea that you are the simp you're part of the cult you're you know you, you believe okay. everything they say the orbiter's reluctance to condemn destiny in public on stream is not because they're simps Being accused of admiring me too much to, to criticize me is different from um, the threat of a dogpile and public humiliation and possibly direct attacks from Destiny himself if you criticize him in public. Fun. I'm no definitely... one's afraid to look look at Stardust. No one's afraid to criticize me because of what I'm going to do to them. Some people are reluctant to criticize me maybe because they they really like me. That's what you're being accused of. Um yes, but also I don't I'm not an orbiter and Destiny's audience doesn't care what I think about him and so I'm capable of disagreeing with him and sure having I, a difference I, I of will, opinion i i will buy that but i so yes i i uh you saying that wasn't terrifying in itself but the the endless echoing of people trying to convince me that they are able to criticize destiny is very unsettling it feels like a cult I don't know. Maybe people. I guess people think that I have a cult, and that you're in my cult too. I was gonna say you, your audience is like I, I'm. Uh, they they can be pretty harsh. Like if I criticize you, they are they can be pretty harsh and uh, and get very upset. And um, what do they it's say? not. Um. Normally, the first thing is that I'm. Uh, that I either I'm a Boshite or, you know, a Destiny simp or, you know, one of those sorts of things. But 
the like com videos that I've done about you or streams that I've done about you, yes, they will pop in and uh, not just discredit me, but talk about like, you know, how dishonest I am, what a piece of crap I am, that I'm, I'm immoral, that I, you know, the, the whole line of things that I hear from anybody that I'm going to be critical of. And this is, this is just the way it is on the internet. This is the same for Vosh. No, I don't, I don't think that's acceptable. I don't want my audience to do that. I don't think it is just the internet. I'm saying Vosh, that Vosh's your audience fans, is not Vosh's special Vosh. in this scenario. I'm not saying they are special. And also, a lot of them are former Destiny or current Destiny fans. And Vosh's fans, a lot of them are also former or current Destiny fans. Yeah, but you're making this it all, sound like I'm saying it's not condemnable because it's just the internet. And that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying it's just the internet, meaning this is what people do. And it's not specifically your community, nor nor anybody else's they're like well, this is I, how people okay act. well i don't want i i would like you to be able to freely talk as much shit about me as you want and if somebody has a, a criticism or disagreement with what you said then sure they should that's what the chat is for but trying to discredit you or tear you down or make you feel bad um I, th I don't want people to do that. Well, okay, so that, I don't know how much time we have left, but that was actually the second thing that I wanted to talk to you about. Um, I, I've had this debate actually a couple of times recently. Do you, here, let me go ahead and just tell you what I think so that it's not up in the air. Okay. I enjoy the way that the space exists. I enjoy it when your uh, audience comes in and gets upset with me. I enjoy the criticism. I enjoy the debates. I enjoy the battles. I enjoy the drama. I enjoy the back and forths. I enjoy the, you know, the comments, the, the tweets at one another. Um, yeah. And I like how all of that happens, but I feel like sometimes <clears throat> when you're criticizing the space, it sounds my what I feel like is it sounds like you're saying like somebody could not uh, consent to exist in this way, the way that the space exists. Um, I think some of the stuff you're talking about is okay, but I think that Destiny's sphere specifically, uh, there are a lot of things that make it so you you can't you can't consent to being part of it. One is that you don't know what it is because you lie so much. Another Meaning as an orbiter or a, like a community member? More an orbiter. Okay. Even a community member though, I have a lot of people who are like, I just realized what, what a fucking sick thing this is and I've been like giving them money for a year and I feel disgusted with myself. So I think it's both, but especially an orbiter. You don't know what you're getting into because it's, it's purposefully hidden and lied about. Um, and then the punishment for when Destiny was being all friendly and like, oh, you're so funny. Oh, I'll retweet your rap songs. Oh, I'm going to follow you on Twitter. Oh, you're so cool. He didn't tell me that he was going to encourage people to dox my fucking ex-wife or to dox me or to threaten to kill my girlfriend or threat, sorry, encourage other people to kill my girlfriend. He didn't tell me any of that shit when I first met him. And if he had... I, I, I regret ever meeting him. A hundred percent. If you had told me any of that, I would have kept my distance. So you, yeah, you can't consent when you went to, to all the lies and hidden threats. No. Wait, did you say he doxed your, your fiance? We're not engaged. He didn't. Um, my. He or told he, he, your girlfriend. He said. He said. He said he doesn't care if I get doxxed. Okay. He said that he wishes he could get a hold of my ex-wife. Which I I view in the coded language of Destiny's sphere to be a call for people to try to find her or contact her. 
Uh, okay. He played old videos of Shaylin on stream, which I think is an enc encourages people to start looking into her past and trying to figure out more about her. Um, and uh, Chud Logic's editor said that he hopes the person who's doxing me and threatening me kills Shaylin, too. And no one has spoken out about none of the orbiters nor Destiny has spoken out about that publicly. So if I had known that was going to happen, no, I did not consent to this. Okay. Yeah. I guess like it. Yeah. I. You obviously can't consent to that sort of stuff, or would nobody would. Nobody would consent to it. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I there guess. You go. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, because we went over a little bit. Sorry about yeah, that. Yeah, sorry. I have another thing I have to go to. It's all right. I appreciate you coming and talking. Thanks for having me.